Man, this is a good pass. Come on down and open up your eyes and get yourself big old hunger, dangerously delicious pies. Dangerouspies.com. Since uh, eight o'clock Phoenix oh, time, goodness, gracious, you've been all day. It's an eight-hour day, but we're doing, we're having fun. It's uh, coming up on four o'clock back in Baltimore, so uh, we're finishing up hour number six of our uh, coverage today from Radio Row, and uh, this is the Rob Long Show, brought to you by Coors Light. But I'm not Rob Long, of course, I'm Drew Forrester. But we're uh, doing the Rob Long Show, brought to you by Coors Light. Wally Williams with us, the ex-Raven, and uh, one of the last things I want to talk to you about real quick because we've had some guys come in today, Jerry Kramer, uh, Conrad Dober, some guys have come in that are having these issues. With Conrad Dober. Yeah, wow. mean, nasty comment. You know what? You know, you know, I've heard down in New Orleans, he is still a legend. Mean, you know, yeah. The stories and stuff that he did Ooh. down there are just totally incredible. Huh. Yeah, and one of the things I want to talk to you about, Wally, I think it's an interesting element because you're, you're, you're going through it now, but maybe you're past the issues mm -hmm. of getting out of the game, knowing when the time is right to get out of the game, right. physically getting out. You look like you look good. You look like you're moving around okay. You're like your bones still creaking, but you look okay. <laughs> the mental part of getting out of the game, not being in the locker room every day with your buddies, just not not being in that limelight anymore. A lot of guys have trouble with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we all do. We all do. Uh, and, and it's not just you know on the professional level. You know, you're almost you know you've been going through this since high school. A lot of the guys were you know getting this kind of attention way back in grade school and just picks up as you go. And it, it's a change for everybody. I mean, it took me. A, Does the league not do a good job of helping you guys out with that when when the time comes for you all to call it quits for whatever reason? Does the league not do enough for you, for you to be able to sit down with somebody and say, hey, I'm struggling with, the, with, with this a little bit? Yeah, well, they, they don't do anything. Right. You know, once I, I think it's been well publicized of, of what Gene Upshaw and, and that, you know, in what's a your PA, out? What's your what, out? what they do for, for the players that are active now and what they do for the retired players. Right. You know, the retire, once, you're out of the, once you're out of the game, you're out of the game. And you really have to rally around, you know, some of the other guys. And, you know, that's why I'm here. You know, I get to rally around a guy like J.O. and tell J.O. when he retires, you know, what it's going to be. You know, you're, you're still 6'8", but, you know, you, you're not going to, nobody's going to you know, know you. Nobody's going to, you know, want you around or anything like that. You know, you, you, you're out of the game. You're out of the game. And it is a transition. But, you know, f for me, uh, the, the, my biggest hurdle was actually admitting that the game had passed me by and that, uh, uh, you know, injuries, you know, pretty much took over. And I just couldn't perform at the level that I wanted to perform at. You know, I think it's hard. Like, I think Steve McNair is one of the guys who was he's going through that right he's now. Battling that. Yeah, he, he's battling that right now. And it's, it took me two years. And this is after having severe neck surgery that you know I came back and played and, and did not want to just say, hey. Well, you, you know, were an athlete your whole life. Yeah. You were always played at a high level. And at right. some point, even when you had an injury or two, you went, oh, what the hell? I'll just keep playing. I'm okay. I'm still better than that guy. Right? I'm better than that guy. Exactly. And, and eventually, you have to come to grips with it. It's not that you're not better than that guy anymore. More, it's that he's healthy and you're not. Is he's healthy and you're not? Right. He may be a little stronger than you, and you know you. You know I was 31 when I retired, and I'm going against maybe a 25 year old guy who was in his prime. And you know what? He might drag me through the mud, and there's nothing I can do about that. And when that happens to you as a player who's playing, you could have got him level, when you were 25. Oh, I could have got him at 20, <laughs> man. You look at him, see you at 25. You know, so you know, you have to go through those things as you get older. Right. And, you know, Jo, uh, I heard him on a, on a yesterday saying that you know mentally he's the, the same old Jo, the same old guy. He knows everything that's going on in the game, but his body. You know, he may be 75% of that guy who, who was drafted number four come out of UCLA. And you feel that. You feel that. When you go against the Dwight Freeney's of the world, and he's running the four He doesn't four. care. Right. He doesn't care at all. And hey, my know, toes bother me. <laughs> so what? <laughs> right. Right. He's really trying to get you out of there. So, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard for all athletes to get through it. You know, we all struggle with it at times. And uh, it, yeah, I think the league does need to do a little better with how they handle with the retired players and everybody moving on. But... Right now, we try to rally around each other, and you know, the, the window of communication is always open between me and all the other guys who played in Baltimore and any other teams that I was associated with. A lot of talk, obviously, and I'm not asking.